tutorial we will be looking over service no business rule so let's start the tutorial with a code all right so now let's discuss on business rule business rules are server side so they only run on server side they will never execute on client side and we have a server side on the top right so anytime you see this it's safe to assume that this particular component is server side so the service according to the service not docs a business route is a server side script that runs when a record is displayed inserted updated or deleted or when table is queried for the rest of the section we will discuss that uh, exactly what it means so business routes are probably the most common scripting location within the service now business routes are actually javascript that runs on the server so in today's world when we think of javascript on the server side we will be probably thinking of something like no yes however service now actually uses mozilla or rhino which is a javascript runtime written in java since the service now since the service now source code is written in java business rules are triggered by database operation so as stated in the code anytime record is inserted updated or deleted or even queried business rule can run out of box there are over 2700 business rules present so they are commonly used all throughout the system within a uh, not throughout the system a we as a developer have an access to current object previous object and scratch pad when we talk about uh, the business rule so what is this current object previous object and scratch pad so the current object is the current object if you are modifying some entity out so the current state of the entity is called as current object the previous state of that entity the previous object is called as previous object and the scratch pad is kind of variable which we pass from server side to client side or uh, we will come to know when we are going through this client script the use of g scratch pad and display business rules okay so you can see uh, this is how the form looks like for business rule it runs on a specific table you can see over here so these are the uh, entities so you can define the name of the business rule you can define the table on which you want to run this business rule you want to perform the database operation description will be like you can give a descriptive uh, description why this business rule is written this is active and advanced whenever you check this advanced flag you will able to see this advanced tab over here there will be two kind there will be database operations which you can see like insert update delete query on which of the data operation you want your business rule to be run and then we have custom condition as you can see on filter conditions you can define all kind of custom condition on that table okay moving on to the next side so example of business rule let's take an example user sends request to a server for a specific incident okay so how uh, this diagram will specify how the workflow happens okay when the user sends a request to server for specific data update okay application re uh, server request record from database server okay this database server responds to the application server with record okay once it, it, this response happened then application server checks for display business rule so display business rule runs on the load of the form okay so check for the display business rule and sends the response back to the user okay it's on the form level you can consider it is on form entity okay then user modify the incident record um, whatever entities that he want to change whatever parameters he want to change he will update those uh, uh, update those things and send the update request the application server receives updates check for the business before business rule so before business rule mo mostly we use for the validation purpose or we want to perform some action before inserting the data into the database okay so then database server updates record in the database then afterward the after business rule runs okay as you can see in the diagram and application checks for the after business rule so first there will be a display business rule over here 
then a user modifies the record and it requests for updation okay so it goes to application server then application server will look for the before business rule after the execution of before business rule it will get updated into database after the record get updated into database then after business will run and from application server we get response back to the console or you can see the desktop you can see the desktop okay let's see few examples uh, of few use cases okay for the business rules let's go to the service now instance um let's move on to the demo okay so the first use case is in terms of display business rule so so this is the service now console this is the uh, home screen for service now okay if you have not seen it so you can navigate to business rule by two ways the one way is like in the application navigator this filter navigator you can type business rule and as you can see under the system definition you will get the business rule module okay so here you can see the business rule the second way is like key you can navigate to the table so i will type i will navigate to the incident table so i will type incident dot list so this will give the list of all the incidents okay and if you right click on this on the configure you will find the business rule so by this way you will find all the business rule which are written on incident table or the table which incident table extends to okay so let's look into the first use case the first use case is like if we want to display a message on incident when incident is created okay by caller so i will create a new business rule okay i will name this business rule as display br i will give br is a short form for business rule okay you can see i want to show you one thing if you check this advanced checkbox then this advanced tab will get up here if you are not setting it out so it will not appear okay so in the when to run condition i will check this advanced checkbox and when to when so i will take display so for display as i already told you that display is like an informative message or it runs on a on load of the form right so it has nothing to do with the database so this database operations will get hidden when we dis, uh, select the display business rule so as you can see now the database operations are gone i over here you can put all kind of condition i will not put any condition right now and i will go to the advanced tab and here you can write a script okay to display the message when the form loads so uh, you can define the uh, the scripting part we will cover into the coming tutorials so just for information purpose you can give an info message like gs dot and then gs is the object and then you can do you can see add error message and add info message so i will give add info message and here you can specify the name the message i will give the message the incident is created by now the question arises key how to give the caller name okay so you can access all the i will append it at the end and you can access all the uh, fields from the incident form the table you have already selected over here so all the fields from this table you can access from here over here in fields okay now i will go to caller okay and caller what i am looking for is i am looking for caller name okay so you can simply search for name so now as you can see i got current dot caller dot caller name okay so this is how you can write a script easily okay i will save it out i 
I will be uh, explaining few shortcuts which you can use uh, while practicing on service now so the one of the shortcut is incident lot list which I have shown in the past now the another shortcut is incident dot to which will open a new form okay so as you can see it opened a new form now I will select a user over here suppose I have selected a user ability here and as you can see the message started coming but as this is a new record so this is coming from our display message so it comes whenever the form loads but as right now we have not created any incident so uh, it's not showing any color I will give short description it's test okay I will save it out and now you can see the incident is created by Apple Tutor okay now let's move quickly to the next use case the next use case is like if whenever there's a field called reopen count so it's not visible on the form I will bring that field up so reopen count just you can go simply configure form layout and form layout we want a field called reopen count so you this is slush bucket you can see the field over here I will just take this field and add it over here and I will add it below configuration item okay I will save it out now you can see the reopen count so this is out of the box business rule I will duplicate this tab out we will use the same tab for the entire demo so it's an out of the box business rule key whenever an update happened on incident the reassignment reopen count get increase something like that so we will check again the same thing go to business rule and if we scroll down there should be one business rule called reopen we will search it out so I will have a filter over here and I should I can add condition name contains reopen okay so this is the incident reopen count okay so I will explain you this business rule quickly so for this also the advanced tab is already checked okay and what it does is run before it's a before business before whenever the update happens what it does it just increments the count by one okay so this is a simple script whenever update happens it will increase the reopen count by one let's try to update this incident only so I will update test incident and if I save this out just a second I will just check the condition on the so it's like current dot is valid field this is a condition as reopened again so if I remove this field for now I'll just put it over here and save this business rule and then if I update it out this incident and I will give incident number now the reassignment count should get updated as you can see the reassignment count got updated by before business rule now let's move quickly to the third use case it's like if we will use the after business rule to update the short description with the caller name okay so what I will do I will duplicate this as tab and I will it's the similar fashion I will configure business rule and now our requirement is like whenever the incident get updated it should get updated with the caller name okay and let's take the reassignment count also okay so let's do it I will give the name as after 
business in the, in this fashion you can try new scenarios on your personal development instance to get some more ideas okay so i have checked that one step so i will give it as after so after the the data gets inserted into a database i want this business to run and it should be after update okay you can try out with other options also it's the same and on advance i will uh, now i want to update a short description so as i mentioned in the theory right so you have current and previous object current object is the current state of the entity and previous will be the previous state of entity so what i will do i will give because we want to set the value in the current object right current dot set value okay set value of which field now how to check that field back and name of that field so we want to select the disk set the description right so right click on description okay you can simply right click on description and you can see over here right show okay so this is the back end name of the field so i will copy it from here only okay you can copy this way or you can use from the field picker as i've shown you in the past okay so description and what i want to update with i will just give a message um, variable message and what will be message will be like incident we give it as string incident updated with reopen count okay i will give the count from here field oh yeah i will pqr you can see reopen count okay reopen count plus will give by caller and then again will give a variable what is that you remember right caller and we need one name of the caller caller dot name is name 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 caller dot name okay so this is how we have created a string sorry created a string now we can give this message over here now another th important thing to consider is like this record is is in after business rule so the database operation has already been performed so we have to again update it out to store it to know the database right so it's quite simple to do that it's current dot update okay and now you can save the business rule let's move back to the incident okay now we have reassignment count 1 and we have this so i will update again i will update suppose sub category with antivirus any update is fine okay we have not specified in criteria so if i save so now you can see the message the incident updated with reopen count 2 by caller apple tutor so you can try different entities like this hope you like this video thanks and stay tuned for more tutorials on the same thank you